What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to push your app to Heroku for web hosting for app with Flask and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to push our app to Heroku for web hosting. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership, it's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in this video, we're going to push our app up to Heroku for professional web hosting. And this is a little bit more difficult than normal because we have a database involved. And when you have a database, it adds a layer of complexity, but it's not that bad. And we're gonna walk through it in this video. So let's head back over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Flask videos in the series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So the first thing I'm going to do is come over here and our main file has always been hello.py. And sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. With Heroku, I've had problems in the past naming this differently. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here, right click and rename this. And I'm going to change this to app.py. Not a big deal, but it kind of can make things easier with Heroku. So that's what we're going to do. Now, like I said, we're going to be using Heroku for this It's a popular web hosting service. They have a completely free tier. That's what we're going to be using for this. Uh, you know, if you want it to be more professional, obviously you're gonna have to pay more for the web hosting, but just to get it up and running to show you how to get it up there and get started, we can use the free tier works perfectly fine. So the next thing we need to do is head over here and go to Google and just type in Heroku CLI and CLI stands for command line interface. It's just a little tool that you're going to need to download and install so that your Git bash terminal can connect to Heroku and come down here. If you're on a Mac, there's the instructions, Linux, there's the instructions. We're on Windows, so you want to install this 64-bit installer. Go ahead and click that, download it, install it. I'm not going to do that because it's very simple. It's just a couple of clicks. No big deal. Uh, but once that's installed, you need to actually come back over here to our terminal and come up here and click the X. Completely close your terminal and restart it again. You have to navigate back to your Flask or directory. You're going to have to turn your virtual environment back on. But go ahead and do that. Otherwise, the changes won't take place. And you could type Heroku-V. That's a lowercase v. And you can see, hey, this is the version I have. Yours will be a different one, obviously a newer, newer version. But if it says something here that was successful, you've got the Heroku tool belt CLI thing so that you can uh, continue on from there. OK, so in order to push our app up to Heroku, we need to make a few changes to it. So the first thing is up until now, we've been just running Flask Run. And when we do this, we have this little development environment server running. And that's great for our purposes when we're working on this thing locally. But when we actually push this up to Heroku, that won't work anymore. We need a professional web server running. So I'm going to hit Control-C to break out of here. And what we want to do is pip install Gunicorn. And that's G-Unicorn. So it's a unicorn with a G, right? I go ahead and do that. OK, that looks good. OK, the next thing we need is Postgres. And we're not using Postgres locally as our database. We're using SQLite. But up on Heroku, we're going to use Postgres. So we need to install that here. So let's go pip install PSYCOPG2. That's PsychoPG2. And I've already got it installed. I did it earlier. Uh, so that looks good. So now if we type in pip freeze, this is a list of all the stuff we're using in our app. And Heroku has no clue that we're using all of that stuff. So we need to let them know by creating a requirements file. So let's go pip freeze and then the greater than or is that less than I think that's the greater than sign uh, anyway and then requirements dot text and that will just output all of that pip freeze stuff into a return into a requirements dot text file if we come over here we can see we now have this requirements dot text file and it just lists all the stuff that we have so okay that looks good next we need a proc file and the proc file tells Heroku what kind of app we're running, a web app. So to do that, we could just do it from here. Let's go type in echo web colon and then gunicorn and then type in app colon app, which is the name of our app, and then output that to a file called proc file. Okay, and if we come back over to our code and look at that, you can see now we've got this proc file. It's saying, hey, use the gunicorn web server and our app is called app. Right. And that's because we renamed it app.py right over here. If you kept it as hello, you would type in hello. But like I said, doing that sometimes 
gives you problems with Heroku. So we're just going to rename it app because they're sort of looking for an app called app. And that just seems to work better. So, okay, that looks good. All right, so that's all the changes that we need to make. Now let's go ahead and log into Heroku. So let's go Heroku login. And it says press any key to open a browser to log in. When you do that, boom, it will open up a little uh, web browser here and you can log in. If you don't have a Heroku account, sign up. It's completely free. They might ask you for a credit card in order to verify that you're a human. Don't worry, they're never gonna charge you unless you buy something and we're not gonna buy anything. We're just gonna use the free tier. So uh, you may have to give them a credit card just to verify that you're a human. No big deal, they're a good company. They're not gonna mess with your card. So that's cool. All right, so it looks like we're logged in. We can go ahead and close that. Head back over to the terminal and you can see, yeah, it's logged in. Normally you're gonna have to enter your password. I didn't have to just now because I logged in earlier today. Otherwise you're gonna have to type in your password. And you'll notice it's sort of just hanging here. So hit control C to break out of here. Okay. So now we need to create an app. So let's go Heroku, create, and we can go ahead and name it now if we want. I'm just gonna call this Flasker. I don't know if that's already taken or not. Flasker is already taken. So let's go Flasker one, I don't know. Flasker one is already taken. Flasker two. Flasker two is already taken. Uh, Flasker 42. <laughs> I don't know. Creating Flasker 42. All right. So you'll see we've got this URL now. So let's go ahead and copy this. Head back over to the web browser and let's open this up and see. And you'll notice we just have the default stuff. So this is our app, flasker42.herokuapp.com. Now, I'm not going to talk about domain names in this video. We'll talk about that in some other video. But all right, we've got this app. Now we need to kind of push our code up there. But first, we need to play around with the database. So what we need to do is tell Heroku, hey, we need a database. We want this to be Postgres. Go ahead and set that up for us. So we can do that. Head over here. Let's clear the screen again. And the command, I'm just going to paste this in, is Heroku add-ons colon create. And then we want a Heroku Postgres SQL database. This is the hobby dev version, which is the free version. And our app is app name. Well, it's not app name. Our actual app name was Flasker42. So whatever your app name is, put that in there. Okay, so it's creating a Heroku thing. It's free. Database is empty. Okay, so that looks good. Now we need to get the URL for that database because we need to plug it into our code, right? So let's go Heroku config dash dash app and then Flasker42. This will give us the database URL. And here it is, it's this big long thing. So highlight this and copy this and then bring it over to our code. Let's open our app.py file and remember at the top, way back when we set up our database, we set up the SQL Alchemy database URI. And this is it locally, right? So let me just go ahead and copy this and do it again. And I'll just comment this out so that it's in there. We now want to just replace this with that big long URL, which was this thing. So again, copy this, bring it back over here, right click and paste. And there we go. Okay. So that looks good. Now, one more thing, let's head down to the very bottom here to our actual model. And you remember way back when we set up the about author section as a text data type, right? Well, Postgres doesn't allow you to add the character count in the text data type. So we have got to get rid of that. So just delete that 500, no big deal. All right, so go ahead and save this file. Okay, now we've made a bunch of changes to our app. We need to save that to Git and GitHub. So let's go git add period, git commit dash am tweaked app for Heroku. All right, and then git push to push that to GitHub. All right, so now we've got all of our stuff. We're ready to go. We can push our code up to Heroku. So to do that, we type in git push Heroku main. We're gonna push up the main branch of our git to Heroku. So this might take a minute or two, uh, depending on how fast it's working. It said, okay, it's figured out we're using Python. It's gonna install some stuff. Now it should go through our requirements.txt file and install all of those things. And here you go, you can see it's installing all of those things that's in our, our pip freeze and our 
requirements.txt file. And it's doing psycho PG2 now, setting that all up, doing all the stuff. All right, that looks good. It's figured out from our proc file that this is a web app. That's good. And now it's compressing everything. 71 megabytes. Now it's launching. All right, that looks good. Almost there. Fingers crossed this works. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so that looks good. So let's head back over to the website and hit refresh. And if everything went well, boom, here's our app. Now, if we try and log in, we can, well, if we go to post, we get an internal server error because the database is not yet set up. Also, if we try and log in, doesn't matter, we're also gonna get a server error because our database hasn't been migrated yet. Remember when we set up our original database locally, we always had to create a migration and push the migration. We have to do the same thing at Heroku at least one time. So to do that, we need to go into the Python terminal on Heroku. So to do that, we just type in Heroku run Python. And that will set up the little Python terminal thing. Okay, so now we can go from app, we want to import our DB. Because remember, uh, let's see up at the top here. Uh, we named our database DB right here, DB. So we need to import that database. So from app import DB, boom, that looks good. Now we need to create the database. So let's go db.create underscore all. And that's a function. Okay, done. Now we can exit out of here. Like that. Hit control C to break out. Yep. Okay, so now we're good to go. Now you'll notice if we come back over to posts, there's nothing here. And if we try to log in, we can't because we don't have a username anymore. Nothing that was in the database locally got pushed up to Heroku. We have to start over. So let's go ahead and register, make sure this works. Uh, John Elder, username Codemy, email john at codemy.com. Favorite color, blue, I don't know. Pass, let's go password123, password123. There's a secure password there. Okay, users added. Looks good. So now we can log in, hopefully, code me, password one, two, three, and boom, here we are. Awesome. We can add a blog post. Test, test, test. We can submit this guy. We can go to post, and there it is. If we want to view it, we can view it. If we want to edit it, we can make this bold. There it is. Now it's bold. And it seems to work. And that is really all there is to it. What was that? 15 minutes and we are done. <laughs> we now have a website. This is live and online. It works completely. Very, very cool. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. So you get access to all my courses, almost 50 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDS of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from CodingView.com and I'll see you in the next video.